Hey there, folks. Rodney Dangerfield here, or as some folks used to call me, the Sultan of Self-Deprecation. Before we dive into the depths of my life, there's someone special I need to give a shout-out to. Without Chris Dallas and Celebrity Recreations, you wouldn't be seeing this digital Rodney right now. Chris has been putting in the hours, bringing back the legends, and giving them a digital makeover. So, a big thanks to Chris Dallas for keeping the flame burning and bringing us all together again for another laugh. So, buckle up, because we're about to take a ride through my wild, laughter-filled life. Grab a drink, get comfy, and let's dive deep into the crazy world of yours truly. Let's rewind the clock, all the way back to 1921, when I was just a little troublemaker named Jacob Cohen. Born in Babylon, New York, I grew up in Queens during the Great Depression. Life was tough, but humor became my saving grace. From pulling pranks to cracking jokes, the stage was always calling my name. I was just a little rascal causing trouble in the streets of Babylon. The Great Depression was in full swing, but I found solace in laughter. The stage beckoned, and little did I know that this mischievous kid would one day become the comedy giant known as Rodney Dangerfield. Now let's talk about the folks who brought yours truly into this world. My parents, my father, Phil Cohen, was a vaudeville performer, and my mother, Dorothy Teitelbaum, well, she had her hands full with my mischief. Dad's comedic chops and Mom's no-nonsense attitude formed the perfect storm that would later become Rodney Dangerfield. Growing up, Cohen wasn't all laughs and punchlines. The Great Depression hit hard, and my family felt the squeeze. We moved to Kew Gardens, Queens, where I continued my rebellious streak. School was, let's say, not my favorite place, but it was on those streets that I learned the art of survival and, of course, the art of making people laugh. With a dad in showbiz, you'd think I was born with a mic in my hand, but nah, it took some time. It wasn't until I saw the likes of W.C. Fields and Jack Benny that I thought, hey, maybe this comedy thing is for me. The apple didn't fall far from the tree, and the stage became my second home. By the age of 19, I was ready to spread my wings and fly, and by fly, I mean leave my neighborhood. I embarked on a journey, a hitchhiking adventure that took me to Chicago and beyond. It was a wild ride filled with odd jobs and odder characters, laying the foundation for the stories I'd later tell on stage. After a stint in the U.S. Army during World War II, I returned to showbiz with a new name, Rodney Dangerfield. The stage was set for the first taste of stardom, but let me tell you, it wasn't all glitz and glamour. I faced rejection, I faced hardship, but that just fueled the fire for what was to come. Fast forward to the 1940s, and I'm navigating the comedy circuit, telling jokes and doing stand-up in dives and clubs. I tried my hand at various odd jobs, including selling aluminum siding, singing waiter. I did it all. But the stage was my true calling. The gritty comedy clubs, the smoke-filled rooms, that's where I cut my teeth, honing the craft that would one day catapult me to stardom. But the call of the stage was too strong, and in 1969, at the ripe age of 48, I finally got my big break on The Ed Sullivan Show. The crowd loved it, and that's when I knew I was onto something big. Ah, my famous catchphrase, I don't get no respect. It wasn't just a line, it was my life story. I mean, come on, even my own doctor told me I had a flesh-eating disease, and I was relieved because at least someone was eating something of mine. But hey, that's life, right? Always ready with a punchline? That's me. I turned my lack of respect into comedic gold. It resonated with audiences because, hey, who hasn't felt a little unappreciated? Now let's talk about the ladies. Behind the scenes, my personal life was a roller coaster too. Marriage, divorce, and everything in between, my relationships were as unpredictable as my punchlines. I've been married twice, but let's not dwell on that. We'll get to the divorces later. My second wife, Joan Child, stuck with me through thick and thin. She was a trooper. She said marriage is like a deck of cards. At the start, all you need is two hearts and a diamond. But by the end, you're looking for a club and a spade? Lights, camera, action. I didn't just stick to the stage, I took Hollywood by storm. By the late 1970s, I was a household name. The Tonight Show, Saturday Night Live, Caddyshack. I was everywhere. My comedic style, a mix of self-deprecation and relatable humor, struck a chord with audiences. The Rodney Revolution was in full swing, and I was at the forefront of a comedy renaissance. Caddyshack, back to school, ladybugs, I was everywhere. I brought my unique brand of humor to the silver screen. Even got an award for easy money. But fame came with its own set of challenges. The late nights, the temptations, it was a wild ride, and I soaked it all in. But let me tell you, being a movie star is no joke. Well, except when you're me. But being a movie star wasn't all glitz and glamour. It had its own set of challenges. Nevertheless, I kept the laughs coming. 
Now, folks, as we fast forward through the years, there were highs and lows, a bit of heart trouble here, a few surgeries there, you know, the usual stuff. But I kept on cracking jokes because what else was there to do? And then, in 2004, at the ripe age of 82, I shuffled off this mortal coil. But hey, I'm still here in spirit, making you folks laugh. As I look back from the Cosmic Comedy Club in the sky, I see the impact I've had on stand-up, movies, and the art of making people laugh. My impact on comedy and pop culture became undeniable. From the rise of observational comedy to the countless comedians influenced by my style, the legacy of Rodney Dangerfield lives on. Laughter truly is the best medicine, and I'm honored to be part of so many people's daily dose. The legacy lives on, and I'm proud to be remembered as the guy who never got no respect, but earned a whole lot of love. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty. The things you might not know about me. The late-night poker games with Sinatra, the impromptu jam sessions with fellow musicians, and the behind-the-scenes antics that made life in the limelight even more hilarious. You think you knew me? Well, think again. The wild parties in Vegas, and the countless pranks I played on fellow comedians. I was a whole lot more than just the guy cracking jokes on stage. Behind every laugh, there's a story. I'll take you behind the scenes, exploring the struggles, the victories, and the moments that defined me. From the late night writing sessions to the camaraderie with fellow comedians, it wasn't always easy, but it sure was one heck of a ride. In the grand comedy of life, there were triumphs and tragedies. From health scares to personal losses, I faced it all with a joke on my lips and a twinkle in my eye. We'll delve into the untold stories, the moments of resilience, and the bittersweet notes that accompanied my laughter-filled journey. As I stand here today, I can't help but think of the Coens, the ones who shaped the man behind the no-respect jokes. My parents, their struggles, their humor. It's all woven into the fabric of the Rodney Dangerfield, you know. The Cohen legacy lives on through the laughter and the love that I've shared with all of you. And then came the final act. In 2004, at the age of 82, I took my last bow. But fear not, my friends, for legends never truly die. As long as there's someone out there telling a Rodney joke, I'll be right there with you, giving you a chuckle from the great comedy club in the sky. Now, let's take a little detour and talk about something close to my heart, my ventures beyond the stage. You see, being Rodney Dangerfield wasn't just about making people laugh. It was about building something lasting. Enter Dangerfields, not just a comedy club, but a second home for comedians and laughter aficionados alike. In the heart of New York City, I opened the doors to Dangerfields in 1969. It became the epicenter of comedy, a place where comedians could hone their craft and share the stage with both up-and-comers and established stars. It wasn't just a club, it was a community, a place where laughter echoed through the walls every night. But I didn't stop there, folks. In the 80s, I took the Dangerfield magic to the city that never sleeps, Las Vegas. Dangerfields in Vegas became a hotspot for entertainment, a place where the Rat Pack would have felt right at home. The lights were bright, the stakes were high, and the laughter was even higher. Now let me share a little secret with you. It wasn't just about building my empire, it was about helping others rise in the world of comedy. I had a knack for spotting talent, and some of the biggest names in comedy got their start at Dangerfields. Jim Carrey, Roseanne Barr, Jerry Seinfeld, I gave them a stage, a chance to shine, and look at them now. Helping these young guns climb the comedy ladder was one of the most rewarding aspects of my career. It's like planting seeds and watching them grow into mighty oaks of laughter. So, the next time you're enjoying a Seinfeld special or a Jim Carrey movie, just remember, they might owe a bit of their success to the guy who got no respect. And there you have it, folks. A little peek into the business side of Rodney Dangerfield. From the iconic Dangerfield's comedy club to the dazzling lights of Vegas and the comedy legends I helped launch, it's been quite the ride. All right, folks. Now let's take a turn down the family lane. I may have been the king of no respect, but in the family department, I had my own little dynasty going on. So how many little danger fields were running around? Well, let me tell you. I was a proud father to two wonderful children, Brian and Melanie. Now, Brian, he followed in his old man's footsteps for a bit. He dipped his toes into the world of stand-up comedy, trying to navigate the stage just like his pops. It wasn't easy, let me tell you, but he gave it a shot. Now, Melanie, my daughter, she didn't take the stage, but she did dabble in the entertainment industry. She got into producing, making her mark behind the scenes. 
I always said in Dangerfield by name, danger by nature, and my kids certainly inherited a bit of that spark. You know, watching your kids find their own way in the world is a unique kind of joy. I might not have gotten the respect I wanted, but in my kids, I found something even more rewarding. A legacy that lives on. Sure, they didn't stick around in the limelight like their old man, but they carved their own paths, and that's what matters. I wanted them to have the freedom to choose, to chase their dreams, and I think they did just that. They brought a bit of Dangerfield charm into their own endeavors, and I couldn't be prouder. And there you have it, folks, the Dangerfield dynasty. Two kids, each forging their own way in the world of entertainment. Whether it's on stage or behind the scenes, the laughter legacy lives on. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up my entire life story in just about 10 minutes. Now hop over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, and let's keep the laughter alive. Shout out to individuals like Chris Dallas and the incredible team at Celebrity Recreations, ensuring legends like yours truly get a digital revival. Show some love, subscribe, like, and share these videos. We usually drop a new celebrity recreation every day, but occasionally the creative process takes a bit longer. So be patient, and in two to three days, you'll have another iconic figure to enjoy. We'd be thrilled to have you join us on this journey and celebrate the recreation of the next legendary personality. Dangerfield signing off. Catch you on the flip side.